In today's health conscious world, there are more opportunities than ever to get in shape and get healthy. From countless gyms and different workouts to different diets and lifestyle changes. You could do cardio, you can do CrossFit, you can lift weights or just go for a run. All of these can be great for you, but many exercises can be hard on your body. So today we are taking you through one of the best full body workouts in my opinion because it includes your core, cardio, resistance, flexibility, and it really has little to no impact on your bones and your joints. So today on Soflo H2O, we are going swimming. Aquatic Center on the beautiful Fort Lauderdale Beach. I'm Olivia Ray, and like most of us here in South Florida, I grew up swimming. When we were kids, we wanted to swim for fun. We wanted to jump into the pool and swim with our friends, so it wasn't really exercise. It was more like a party. I really grew to love swimming, so much in fact that when I got older, I joined the swim team and quickly learned that it was a lot of work, but the benefits were amazing. So today we came to the Fort Lauderdale Aquatic Center to learn a whole lot more about swimming and diving and its history and future right here in Fort Lauderdale. When you first see this incredible facility, it can be a little overwhelming. From the Olympic sized pools to the towering high dive platform, everyone seems to know what to do. But there's a lot to take in. So luckily, we know Laura Vogt, the woman responsible for this beautiful modern aquatic center and our tour guide today. Thanks for letting us come out and kind of see what you guys have to offer. We're glad you're here. Thank you for coming. We have a long history of swimming and just really excited for all of the new uh, developments and the renovations that we've had. And the history of swimming and diving runs deep here in Fort Lauderdale. The city of Fort Lauderdale has a long history of swimming. In 1928, the city built the first Olympic sized swimming pool in the state of Florida. And it was right across the street here okay. at the beach. And it was a saltwater pool. They took water from the ocean and they filled it up. This property that's here was built in 1965, so we celebrated the ribbon cutting of our renovation on our 95th anniversary uh, for, with swimming in Fort Lauderdale of this brand new facility and it's a $47 million project. We're so proud to continue the legacy of sports and for all the aquatic fans. Uh, all around the world in our community. You guys have a lot of different sections here, so what kind of areas are you guys able to offer for people? Well, we, in our first year, it was last year, and we hosted all of the, the aquatic sports events, so it was very exciting, a, a real challenge. So we had our ribbon cutting, we hosted high diving events, regular diving, platform diving events, water polo, artistic swimming and swimming events. And so in our first year, we had every major sport come in here uh, from national to local events, international events. We hosted the World Cup uh, last May and the, and the high dive, which was very exciting. This year, we'll be just as busy at the Fort Lauderdale Aquatic Center. From the under 18 U.S. national swimming to the U.S. men's water polo competing in July. But the pool is not just for big events. Yes, it's a parks and recreation facility. We're open to the public just about every day of the year with the exception of a couple holidays. On Sundays, we are open from 11 to 1 and you can go off the springboards here at Fort Lauderdale Aquatic Center. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about and you're going to see a lot of high diving, but if you want to go on the springboards a little level down, that's maybe where I would stay, you can do that. So that's still nice cool, to know. That's a high dive. <laughs> it is kind of a high dive. I mean, it gets, it gets a little Three tall Three meters. Once I kept going up, I, like, you know, it gets a little intimidating, but I could stay down there a little bit. The Aquatic Center is amazing, and it's been completely renovated. But Laura and her team aren't done yet. The city of Fort Lauderdale is going to be renovating the second phase of the facility that includes the Swimming Hall of Fame. So this is the International Swimming Hall of Fame worldwide headquarters here, and they're going to be renovating the museum buildings, and it's going to be, it'll include restaurants, 
and there's going to be an indoor surfing flume. There's going to be an aquarium and uh, meeting rooms, and it's very exciting. We cannot wait to show you all of the new attractions planned for the Aquatic Center. And one really cool thing that's unique to this center is that you can actually come by boat. On the intercoastal waterway, they're going to be having a, a boat stop here for public boats to come in to drop off or pick up. And so right now we have a water taxi uh, drop off location here. Continuing on with the Fort Lauderdale Beach and the world of swimming and aquatics and it's, it's exciting time for us. The things you can do now and what's coming are super exciting. But don't forget, swimming is for everyone, from the very young kiddos learning to swim to folks with many swim seasons under their belts. Well, Fort Lauderdale is a Venice of America, and swimming and aquatic sports are something that you can do your entire life. So one of the most important things that anybody can do is learn how to swim. So swimming lessons, and then that can take you on through the rest of your life and through your older years and when you're retired. It's, just a, it's a sport that anybody can do, and it's a sport that can save your life, and it's great physical fitness as well. So it's something for everyone, whether it's fitness swimming, it's competition, it's the thrill seekers that want to go off the diving board, Boards. You want to see the water polo or the beautiful artistic swimming. We have that all here, all around the year, and uh, beautiful weather. So come out and join us and have a great day here at the beach. Who knew South Florida had such a deep history in the world of swimming? And who knew Fort Lauderdale had such a beautiful facility? When we come back, we're meeting with Rialto Heller. He'll show us what it takes to be a lifeguard here at the Aquatic Center. And I hope you're not afraid of heights because we may even get to check out the dive platform, that tower over the complex. Lauderdale Aquatic Center is huge, with over 45 million gallons of water just waiting for swimmers. But someone has to make sure all the swimmers are safe. Rialto Heller is the guy that makes sure the facility and the crew are ready for all of the swimmers that use it. Rialto, we are in one of y'all's kind of mini um, lap pools in here. Just, you know, floating around, the water feels great. It's a beautiful day outside, but you guys have a lot of different activities that people can do here. So talk a little bit about those. So basically we are more of a competitive atmosphere here. We are open to the public. We do have public swim and springboard diving. Mm -hmm. The other kind of programs we do offer is our Swim Fort Lauderdale Masters team and also our age group team. We also offer our water fitness class. Other courses we do offer is going to be the lifeguarding course. Not only us, but we desperately need more guards. Everyone in the aquatic industry, especially pools. Mm -hmm. So we are offering the American Red Cross lifeguarding course. We actually just finished the course over the weekend and got two new certified lifeguards. That's oh, great. That's exciting. Exactly. Okay, you right. definitely need lifeguards everywhere you go. I mean, especially down here in Fort Lauderdale, you have bodies of water everywhere from pools to oceans to everything in between. So I know you guys have kind of a little bit of a test for people. What is it called that you guys do here? So in order to go into the lifeguarding course, you have to do what's called the lifeguarding prerequisites. Okay. They actually updated it to the 2024 version. Okay. With the prerequisites, there are two. The swim tread swim. The second one is the last one is going to be the brick test. Wow. I might have to try that one out and see if I could pass the, pass the test. Hey, we're always looking for guards. If you want, I can do a prerequisites with you right now. Honestly, that'd be great. No, okay. there the first one we're going to do is the first prerequisite for the class. You're going to jump in. As soon as you jump in, you're going to start swimming. Freestyle, breaststroke, or a combination of the two. You're going to swim 150 yards. That basically means you're going to touch this wall three times. Once you finish that 150, I'm going to have my watch ready. Two minutes, you're going to tread water. When you're treading water, hands are above the water or underneath your armpits the whole time. You're only using your legs, okay? No kickboard this time. Okay, no kickboard. And, and then after that, once you finish that, you're going to do another 50, and then that's the end of the first pre-rest. Go for it. Not sure I mentioned it, but I was on the swim team in high school, so I do have a little experience in the pool. Although it's been a little while since I swam, I still remembered how to do flip turns. Not bad, huh? Good, all right, now you're gonna tread water, all right? Go! Treading water was not too bad at first, but after a minute or so, I definitely started to feel it. Three, two, one, 50 more. Good. 
How do you feel? Woo. Great, you got the first prerequisite done. We did it. Okay, it's not over yet though. <laughs> we got one more, all right? The brick test, which is the second part prerequisite, you're gonna swim out 20 yards. You'll start in the water. For this one, there is no goggles though. Remember, if you're going out to do a rescue, guards don't have their goggles on, all right? So you're gonna swim out 20 yards. You're gonna go down and pick up a 10 pound brick. With that 10 pound brick, you gotta come back up, all right? Once you hit the surface, both hands must remain on the brick at all times. Typically what people do is they put it on their chest and they swim backwards, all right, kicking. If you wanna be fancy, you can have the brick above. Water polo players do that. You don't need to, you just gotta keep that brick on you. Once you get closer to the, over here, I'll give you a heads up so you don't hit your head. You're going to put the brick on the deck and then you're going to come out without using a ladder, all right? Get set, go. Okay, to tell you the truth, by this time, I'm starting to get tired. And to make it even harder, both of my contacts fall out right when I'm diving down to get the brick the first time. It took me a second to find the brick, but I finally got it. Now back to Rialto and qualifying. Keep going, you got this. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Feet on the deck, feet on the deck. Wow, lifeguard qualification was a lot more intense than I thought it would be. But with Rialto's instruction, I got it done. And who knows, if this television thing doesn't work out, now I'm a qualified lifeguard. Many local cities and towns have their own public pools right here in South Florida. So if you're interested in being a lifeguard, go online. If not, the American Red Cross offers lifeguard classes. You can go to redcross.org forward slash take a class forward slash lifeguarding to find out more. Stick around because later in the show, we are gonna show you this historic gym right here in South Florida. Steven, we have a lot going on behind us here at the diving pool. You're a big part of this program here, so talk a little bit about what you do with the diving program. So I'm the high diving program coordinator here at the, the newly renovated Fort Lauderdale Aquatic Center. Um, and my job is essentially to expand the sport of high diving in a safe fashion, right? So we're talking about 27 meters. We have athletes hitting the water at 55 miles an hour, right? So in an inherently dangerous sport, my job is to try to make this facility and our program as safe as possible for these people learning these skills. And what you were telling me a little bit before is you have a little background in this. You did it yourself, so you kind of know, you know what to expect when the people come in and what they need for that safety. Right, so I was a professional cliff diver for a little over a decade. I was fortunate enough to, to represent Team USA at the World Championships, and even more fortunate to be world champion back in 2017. Um, so I'm quite happy to bring a lot of that experience to this uh, facility, which is really the first time a lot of these athletes will have a chance to train this high in a nice controlled setting. So when it does come to the different programs that you guys are able to do with high divers, what do you guys have for people? First and foremost, we are a team dedicated to helping athletes um, internationally and nationally uh, reach their dreams. More than that, it's, it's an extra opportunity for divers in the diving world to have a path past competition, right? So we're opening up doors to um, all of a sudden people are able to earn a living through diving. We have people working on and off the cruise ships. We have people going to Cirque du Soleil. So we are essentially um, a training facility where people can come and, and continue to develop their passion and maybe turn it into some of these lifelong skills and, and even a job. So kind of behind here, how many levels do you guys have for people? Right, so we have traditionally the highest platform that you'll see in the Olympics is up to 10 meter. And that is our one, two, three, four, fifth platform there in the middle all by itself and so kids even starting at age seven and eight will come in for lessons and at the end of their lessons they get to go up and jump off the 10 meter platform past that we start our high dive platform so we have four high diving platforms set at 15 20 24 and 27 meters this is the only high diving platform in the western hemisphere so like i said we're fortunate enough to get a lot of traffic through here no absolutely well, should we go check it out yeah let's do it all right let's go this is our first high diving platform this is the 15 meters and this is essentially 
um, as kids develop throughout their career and they've, they've acquired enough of the foundational skills, this is really the first opportunity they'll have to test their high diving skills at 15 meters. Okay. Just kind of press off as you go to dive here and then just hope that you're tumbling down. We give the athletes one or two cues for success um, and then we just ask them to trust in themselves and trust in their training. Well, and this isn't as high as it goes. This, this is it. So this is just more. this is just intro. So let's yes. get up a little bit higher to some of the competition heights. All right, y'all. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right. So here we are. This is the 20 meter level, okay. and this is the competition height for women. Right. Oh, so okay. in Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, um, the World Aquatics World Cups, World Championships, this will be the height that the women compete from. So this is so where I should jump on. That's right? it. You got it. We'll get a suit for you. You'll be if ready I, to like, go. If I like slowly <laughs> inch my way up, yeah. I think I'm just gonna stop right here. That's fine. So with high diving, uh, safety is absolutely our, our number one goal. And so we do have some things in place in terms of wind speed, uh, rain, things like that. If we can't see the bottom of the pool, clearly we will shut down practice, right? So um, we are using all the same safety standards as you know World Aquatics, which is sort of the, the gold standard for safety. So we've sort of emulated that here. And uh, we have a handheld wind gauge. If the wind gets up there too high, we'll let the athletes know that maybe today is a good day to stay down a little bit. Okay. All right, so here we are. We this, made it to the top. This is the top deck, 27 meters. Absolutely one of a kind, wonderful view of Fort Lauderdale. Oh, it's here. gorgeous. <laughs> I just need to get to a point where I can stop and enjoy the views. Yeah. This is so nice. Okay, so this is where the men can come up to. Right, so this is competition height for the men. You'll see them doing as much as uh, five somersaults. You have guys starting from their hands in a handstand up here, five twists. I mean, these guys are doing some of the most amazing things. My heart is like beating just thinking about <laughs> them in a handstand falling off. <laughs> totally normal response, wow. yeah. So. But you've gotten up to this kind of height. Absolutely, when so you were competing. I was fortunate enough again to, to represent Team USA. I was world champion in 2017, runner up in 2019. Um, so, I, as even as comfortable as I am up here, I still get a little nervous, so totally okay. Thank you so much for showing us all of the different levels. It's been an experience coming up here, but we should go back down. I can try some of the little bouncy boards at the bottom. That's more my speed. Sure, if you want, we can take the fast way down right here. Or... Oh, yeah. yeah, just like pin. Yeah, you got pin it, no needle. problem. Here we go. 27! I'm like, no, y'all, when I tell you my legs are shaking just thinking about it. All right, well, we'll take this the 162 me. stairs back down then. Perfect. So right. it's a little bit of a workout, a different kind. Okay, so Olivia, we're gonna go with a nice, easy front jump, all right? So right on the edge of the board, when we bend down, we wanna make sure our shoulders stay nice and tall. If we're leaning forward, we're gonna jump too far away. After we jump, arms come out to the side, nice and tight in our core. Right before we hit the water, arms come in. Yeah, just naturally, as you jump, you let them come up. Ready, one, two, three, go, and tight. Yeah, <laughs> There we go. There's a ten. Will you jump? Thanks for having us. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Not a problem. I got a lot of tens from you, which I was loving, and your instruction helped me a lot because oh. the first time definitely a little wobbly so thanks for joining us glad you had a little fun of course it's a beautiful facility i feel like everyone needs to come out and experience this for thank sure. you always yeah. remember to point your toes point the toe oh my gosh i know right when we come back we are going from high dive action to relaxation at one of south florida's most historic pools Welcome back, y'all. Today we're diving into the most historic pool in South Florida, the Venetian Pool. I'm so excited to explore this gorgeous oasis. This is a generational place. We have visitors that come here to learn swim lessons, and years later they're still returning to come back and enjoy the facility with their family. We've teamed up with Anna Hanna, the Venetian Pool Assistant Aquatic Supervisor, to give us the rundown. It is a beautiful day to be here at the Venetian Pool in Coral Gables. This is my first time coming, and I like walked up and I was like, the water is so clear and everything, so I know there's a lot more history to being here. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, what people probably don't know about this pool? The Venetian Pool is actually in its centennial year. 
So we've reached 100. It was originally designed by George Merrick and Deniman Fink. They used this old rock quarry and turned it into a community place, a place where you could get that hometown feel that Coral Gables is always trying to offer. Okay, so it just became like a very prominent point and place for people to come to. Oh yeah, of course, and um, Venetian Pool has the mooring posts, like in Venice. That's exactly what I feel. I do feel kind of like I'm in Venice, Italy, or I'm gonna take like a little gondola through the water. And you can tell a lot of people, or even here today, you have so many people on the water. It just seems like a place that people want to escape. What's it like, what's the experience like for people just coming on a you know normal day like today? Well, a day like today, we offer free life jackets. We have lounge chairs for rent, towels for sale, and a big, beautiful facility that you're welcome to enjoy. There's also some caves in the grotto, so if you see a lifeguard in there, that means it's open and you can go explore. We do have a capacity, and then our other biggest policy that we have to keep up is that you gotta be three or older to come inside. So just make sure your kids are old enough so everybody can enjoy. The water gets pumped in from the Biscayne Aquifer. It's spring-fed, and we use one part per million chlorine. So that's okay. the legal limit, wow. and that's less than your tap water. So you're swimming in some very fresh, very inviting water here in Coral Gables. It's different than just going to any pool that's down here in South Florida. It's oh, definitely yeah. a special and unique experience. Yeah, we're um, also on the National Historic Registry. So if you look at that, we're the only aquatic facility because we're spring-fed and how we do the drain and fill for the pool every day in the summer. We are run by the Community Recreation Department, so we also have the ability to let you have a birthday party here. You can do a private rental. We also have some community events like our pumpkin float. You can come in October, oh, carve a pumpkin with your family, okay. and we'll float it out on the water. How neat. And once a year, we have our dog day. So that's our paws in the pool event. Oh, adorable. So you okay. can bring your canine friend. Um, you just buy the ticket for them as well. Okay. And because we are a drain and fill pool, we can do that and we can offer that and still maintain like the hygienic quality Amazing. that we need. Okay, if you guys have some pup friends and you want to bring them out on that day, that's the perfect day to do it. That's why I appreciate it. I want to go check out more, so should we go walk around the pool? Let's go. Okay, now isn't this place amazing? I had to jump in and check out just how cold it really was. But let me tell y'all, on a hot day in SoFlo like this one, it's absolutely perfect. When we talked to Anna, she said this pool is really for everybody. It's like the perfect opportunity just to come to an historic site and experience the beautiful water and just all the people that are coming around. As you can see, there's a lot of people here today. The sun is shining, it's so nice, so I'm loving it. Let's go under. from high diving to lifeguard training or just relaxing right here at the Venetian pool. We hope you guys had fun today and I hope you guys do a little more exploring of these pools yourself. Always remember, if you do want to have fun in South Florida,